What do you use half? Why is this hot? Oh, because it's outside. We got new water bottles today. And this is the front. That is the front. And then on the back. It's just awesome. It's so cool. Ah. So, again, a lot to talk about. Let's just kind of jump right in and get going. Um, and we're just going to kind of go back and forth between us. First of all, thankfully, I have my little handy dandy book journal here because I read a lot in July. And um, this is the first month where I really utilize my Kindle. And I'm not a big Kindle reader. I do not particularly enjoy Kindle reading at all. I, it's even to the point where I don't even like reading articles online or blogs or anything. If I do, I typically will print it out and read it that way. Just that's how my brain works. But I do have a few Kindle books um, that I have read. I canceled my Kindle Unlimited because I was paying for something that I was not utilizing. Um, for the cost that it is a month and how many books I read, it was a waste of money for me. It would be worth it to just buy the book that I want to read and read it that way. So, can't believe it took me this long to figure that out. But, so on my little tracker here, I have the list of all the books that I've read in July. And the first one that I finished um, was a Kindle book, Penelope's Pursuit by Shetan Havoc. Hi, Grandma. <laughs> and this is a twist on the Mail Order Bride series. Penelope's sister disappeared 10 years ago and she answered a Mail Order Bride advertisement and basically disappeared off the plate, face of the earth and um, nobody has seen or heard from her since. And so Penelope is now after, is, is going to go find her sister and what happened to all of that. And it turns out that there is multiple people that are disappearing, um, with these mail order brides. And this book covers some really heavy topics. There's opium addiction, there's suicide, there's um, brothels like it, it's gonna hand, um, it's gonna go into some very heavy um, heavy things and actually that's one of the reasons that I really loved it and I think I ended up giving it five stars and down below you can check out the Goodreads uh, review that I left actually most of these there is a Goodreads review to it and that just, you know, by the end of the month, it's like, what what was all the things that I'm trying to remember about it? I loved watching Penelope um, grow as a character. So she's very set in her ways, kind of she knows best. And it just, to watch her, watch her transform as a character was was really engaging for me. So I really enjoyed that. The other book that I finished on Kindle this month uh, by Shetan Havoc was, it's been rebranded, so it's now Shattering Secrets. It was originally Christmas Embers. So on Goodreads, as of filming this, it is still under Christmas Embers, but it has been, again, rebranded as Shattering Secrets. It was originally released as a Christmas novel, and it's not. And this, whew, this is the story of a woman that runs a successful blog and one of the things that she tries to do is, or one of the things that she goes in and does is these kids, um, basically what they really want for Christmas. So this kid, all she wants, one of the examples are this one kid, all she wants is an empty box, like no strings attached to it. So it's just heartbreaking. And one of the uh, one of the other kids his mom is dying and he wants to know his dad Aww. and um the mom was a prostitute and the dad was a pastor and so this woman is just enraged and 
she's out to figure out who this kid's dad is. And it is, it is a very hard book to read, but it's beautiful, it's ugly, and it just shows what adultery could do, not only to a family, but to a church and to the family of God. And it's, it's wonderful and ugly and, oh, uh, just, yeah. So those are two kind of books that I read this month uh, by Shatota Havoc. So I'm going to let Emma take up the torture and talk about books she read. The first book that I read was called Zia, which is the second book of the Island of the Blue Dolphin. Or, yeah, it's like the, it's almost like a second book. Uh, it's like a sequel, I guess you can say. Continuation story. Yeah. Um, I don't have it with me because I put it into their little library. Uh, but this is about the girl who moved from her, I guess you can say, tribe and went to another tribe called the Mission in Santa Barbara. Yeah, Santa Barbara. And <clears throat> she figures out that her aunt is on a different island and so her brother Mando interesting name her brother Mando and her find this boat and find her <laughs> sorry to go find her aunt uh, while they are on this trip they run across a big boat or a big ship and they take take Zia and Mando captive and now Zia like, will I ever be able to find my aunt? They escape. But well, don't, 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 don't. I know, I'm not telling the story. It's, the ship is kind of like, in there, but. Um, they escape, but something else happens that people are accusing her of something that she didn't do. And now she can't go find her aunt. So. It wasn't, hold on. It was an interesting book. I like Scott O'Dell's writings, but when he writes about, I guess you could say, like Native Americans and things, um, it's hard for me to understand some of his writings. But other than that, it was I liked it. Probably I would never read it again. So I don't know what anyone because I would never read four. it. It was a three star read for me. The first book I read was. Um, I Will Repay by Baroness Orksy, and this is, I thought it was the second book to The Scarlet Pimpernel. There seems to be a couple of conflicting, this is either book two or book three, depending on what source you use. This is the story of um, The Scarlet Pimpernel kind of still going on with the French Revolution, and it opens up 10 years before the main time. I think it was 10 years. Everything is 10 years. Now it's, it's kind of confusing. But what happens is there's our main character, our main hero, who um, he gets trapped with this basically aristocrat who's too big for his britches kind of boy. And they ended up in a duel. The, the, our main character does not want to be in here. But he just is goaded and goaded and goaded and finally, you know, everybody's like, you've got to stand up. You, he has challenged you to a duel. And he's like, I don't want to do this stupid thing. <laughs> and ends up killing the boy because, well, killed or be killed. Because that's how duels work. So stupid. And back home, the dad is basically like, he turns to his daughter. He's old, decrepit, dying. Turns to his daughter and says, you will avenge me. And you will avenge your brother. And when you have the opportunity to take this guy out, you're going to do it. Swear this oath to me. And so she's like, I guess I do because you're my dad. What else am I going to do? You're dying. And then we fast forward 10 years later. 10 years later, now we're in the middle of this French Revolution. And um, she ends up running across his path. And she ends up needing refuge with him and he kind of watches over her and saves her and basically they kind of fall in love but now she's like but I've got to keep my oath to my father 
What I didn't like about this is that the Scarlet Pimpernel is in here like twice. And the Scarlet Pimpernel is like the best thing about. And also I have a cold, so I'm really feeling stuffy right now. So. <sighs> so. It was like a three star read for me. It was really intriguing. I wish I could have gotten it without it being abridged. There's nothing to abridge. They're pretty short stories anyway. <sighs> So it was a three star read only because like I love the Scarlet Pimpernel. I love his character. He's just funny and we didn't really get to see that. We just got to see a love story of like Les Miserables. Do I, will I, don't I, yeah, I don't know. There was that. And then the other one that I read and finished was an audio book that my husband and I listened to as we were driving and that is the the Jesus of the East or the, the, oh, Seeing Jesus in the East. And it's by Ravi Zacharias and Abdu Murray. That was a five star read. That was really interesting because it was talking about the Eastern cultures and why Jesus was just a, a new phenomenal. He was into the storytelling, which is huge in the East. Um, but his stories didn't fit the Eastern culture and that's kind of what separated him and how Western culture and Eastern culture, how we have this divide, but we also have this unity between us that comes with Christianity and the Bible. It was really, really good. I really enjoyed it. The guy that read it did a great job. And one of the things that my husband was um, frustrated with in this book, he's like, you know, I want to make notes and I want to stop and I want to highlight and I was like you know that's one of the reasons why I like listening to nonfiction. it's a double-edged sword for me because like you I want to stop and I want to make notes and I want to highlight and I want to do a little more research and things like that it's, it's a double-edged sword that is my first inclination but that's also what gets me stuck with nonfiction. having it as an audiobook where they're just going and you have to just go along with it is one way that it's easier for me to just take in the whole book and take in the whole story. And yeah, now I want to reread it and kind of take little bits by bit, but I got the full, the full scope of it. And so I wasn't stuck on the little, the little details that tend to happen. So... The next one I have was a DNF. It was the Follow Me Back. Um, I probably should have read the first chapter too, but I got to the second chapter and there was already already the S word, so I stopped it or I stopped reading it. And there was a and it wasn't just the S word though. It was like the the girl main character. The the is, whole front of the book. I was like, you want to read this because it had something. See me, want me, and love me. And I didn't see that at first. I was like, you want to read like, this? <laughs> what? And it opens up with her obsessing about a guy. I was like, are you sure this is yeah. what you thought it was? It was not what I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> so that one went, and what was that book that you did DNF? Follow Me Back. Follow Me Back. Yeah. So that was the DNF. And then... We did Nims um, Island and we did as a read and then for the read aloud, we read Nims Island again. Um, read the book, watched the movie. Movie's not like the book. It's it's not. It's good, but it's it's not like the book at all. Uh, this is about a girl who has such a big imagination, who lives on an island with her father. Her mother is dead. Yeah, dead. Um, and her father's such a big scientist, so he. Um, takes his boat play at different places trying to collect plankton and studies them. Well, one day while he's out, he doesn't return and she gets this email from a um, Alex. Alex Alex Rover, her one of um her favorite authors yeah. for these adventurous books. Yeah. So she starts writing and then she's like I need you to come because my father is not here and Blah blah. Alex is not Alex. And she realizes that this Alex Rover is not what she thought she was. Or this person was. Yeah, but again, the movie changed 
Yeah, I did. The, the, it's a short little book here, so you're gonna have to make you're gonna have to make some fun parts or make it bigger in the movie because this would be a very short movie. But golly, I don't know. It was just like that's not what the book was like. There's so many things we were like, what? Yeah. Like so, but Alex we, Rover is she's an adventurous person in the movie. She's scared of everything. Well, but in the book she was trying to figure things out too. Yeah, but not as much as the movie did. The progressive it. soup. I don't remember that in the book at all. No. Where she would only eat the one thing. Yeah, there is there is just some things. It was like Okay. No. Yeah, the book was better. Yeah. Okay, I need to get talking here or if we're going to be here for a while. Um, I do have a couple of DNFs. Um, I don't typically talk about DNFs. Just, I don't. But I DNF'd a book that you ended up reading and enjoying. I DNF'd Never Let Go by Elizabeth Goddard. And I was just like, you know, every time this guy enters the room, there's sparks flying. This is supposed to be a mystery. And... I, this is more of a romance and they're driving me crazy uh her even even her one friend has like daggers flying out of her when she looks at the sky and I'm like can we get to the to the plot line here and I, I dnf'd it but she read it I think it was the ending that you were like wait a minute some things aren't adding up right yeah the ending was a little confusing like says it's a girl but later out but later they say it's someone else and I'm like, it doesn't fit. It doesn't. It doesn't fit. It was so confusing, but other than that, I liked it. It was a good book. I probably would never read it again. I want to try to finish a series, but I mean, it's it's mystery. They're trying to find who killed or not killed, but kidnapped this girl. It's now been two decades later, and they're trying to find it, her. Um, I know at one point when I stopped it, and this was very early on, I stopped it early on, They there was even suspicion that the dad was not even died of natural causes. He was murdered, possibly. The greatest called grandfather. Or Willow's, grandfather. Willow's grandfather was, she figures out, was murdered, and she was wondering why and who did it. And Yeah, so there's all that. And she's yeah. now taking over this... The case that the grandfather had. Yeah, because he was a private eye. Yeah. yeah. It, it, uh, it sounded fun. And it was Christian, so I was like, okay, this will be interesting. No. The other DNF um, that I'm going to mention is because it was part of the Read Your Bookshelves Challenge that Chantel puts on. And in July, the prompt was, um, starts with the same letter as your name. And I'm Shalise. So it starts with the C, and so I had the Confessions of Franny Langton, Lang Langton, and I had really high hopes for this book. I really need to just be like, the high hope books just get rid of because they've been duds for me, and books with low expectations have been really, really good. So I think we need to pause this and change the battery. With this book, it is about a girl on a plantation in Jamaica, and it is basically she becomes a house slave instead of in the in the field because the the one guy just has her come in, and she is liked and disliked, liked and hated by our main woman. You can share that's not. Oh, he does that all the time. Okay. Her. And so I thought it would be okay. And it, it all opens out. It all opens up with she is accused of murdering her master and mistress. And so now she's gonna be like telling her story, like why would I murder them? I loved them and all of that. And I'm reading this, and the the narrative is just so confusing. I, I'm just getting lost easily and it's 
there we got to one point and I kept pushing through and I, I got to like page 66 when at this point the the woman hates her the main woman of the house she hates her she knows that her husband is unfaithful and weird and I don't think I need to explain details of that so Fran Fanny Franny Franny is now helping the husband work as in his science lab thing um building with him and he's looking at her and she's like I have the power to make him want me and so she starts basically becoming seductive she starts going to take off her clothes but then it's I, I was just oh uh okay but with what happens afterwards, I can't tell if they went forward with that or not. It was so confusing. So I went online, I went to Goodreads, and I started reading reviews, and I started checking what other people had to say about this. And then I learned more about this book that I've just decided to DNF it. Later on, it sounds like she falls in love with her mistress and where that goes, and I just, I'm just going to DNF this. So that's that was unfortunate it was really hard because it's I don't have a lot of books with the letter C on my shelves I noticed this with Chantel's video today when she was choosing her August TBR so I think it's okay because when I went for it and I went to my shelves even though I hauled this later this year so it's technically not still from my shelves uh, this is the cotton quilt by Anne Rinaldi so I coffin. have coffin quilt. I know I keep saying the cotton quilt, but it's the coffin quilt by Anne Rinaldi, and it has a C in it. There was one other book that had a C in it, but because I was down, I was down to the last three days of July, so I was like, I need something short. So this one is about the feud between the Hatfields and the McCoys, and it's being told from this seven-year-old and then I think you go all the way up to a 14-year-old perspective so you have like a seven-year span of this this feud and it even goes back further and it was really interesting it was it's very hard to give this one was really 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 hard to give a star review for because the writing was excellent Anna Rinaldi did a phenomenal job with this book I just didn't like the characters and I didn't really enjoy the story. It was weird. It had a lot of the Appalachian uh, uh, superstitions that they have. So one of the main parts of this book is that this yeller and it's just called the yeller. <coughs> I don't know if it's a dog. I don't know if it's like a vapor. I don't know what it is that basically wards her that something bad is going to happen. So there's that in here. But basically what Anne Rinaldi did is she took all of these, what possibly started out as the big feud between the Hatfields and the McCoys and basically kind of chronologically wrote what it could have looked like as a fiction told from this person's perspective, from uh, Fanny's perspective. Franny and Fanny. I know, <laughs> from Fanny's perspective. And so, I mean, I kept, I kept the names pretty similar. <laughs> with the, <laughs> that was not intentional. But, oh my goodness, so what I, what little I know of the Hatfield and McCoy feud um, stems from Christy with all of their Allens and the Taylor feuds, which the Hatfield and McCoy also was kind of talked about in uh, a movie that we used to love watching growing up, Pot of Gold, with um, Jimmy Stewart and other people that I can't remember. But they kind of bring, hey, you've heard of the Hatfield and McCoy feud. Well, this is the McCoy and I can't even remember the other person. So I don't know a whole lot about it. So <sighs> it was interesting. It was really good. It was very heart-wrenching. Um, the whole final <clears throat> shootout thing was oh, hard. So love Anne Rinaldi, love what she did with it. Just didn't like, just didn't 
like the characters, didn't like anything about them. Fanny, it, it kind of, she's just not a likable person. As long as things are going her way, she's okay with it. But when it isn't going her way, she just turns nasty. And her one sister is constantly just abusing her. Like she would hold her head under water trying to drown her until she got what she wanted out of her. And the family is just not really doing anything about it. Just, okay, well, let's send her away since there's, you know, friction between the two. Just, what is going on here? So, so that's what I'm going to do for the Read Your Bookshelves Challenge. I DNF'd one, but in order to finish the prompt, I ended up picking up the coffin quilt. And the coffin quilt is just her sister basically starts working on this quilt where she's moving coffins that are around the edge of the quilt, moves to the center as they die. Like that's, it. it's it's weird. It's so weird. Our book. Okay. <laughs> we need something happier. I'm not really happy. Um, for mine, it, for- DNF. Yeah. Oh yeah, your July DNF was, your July I'm... Read Your Shelf book was a DNF too. I picked this up at a Christian bookstore and it looked so, so good. I was reading the back and it looked so good. I start reading it and some of his sentences are really choppy. It's really confusing. I, do, I feel like I've missed another a pre book. A previous like a, book. Yeah. And, but this is the book one. And I feel like I missed his entire life. Why are, Why is this school he went to... Um, why is everyone there hate him so much? And so I think I might have missed a book. Well, I decided to continue reading it. And now they're going to war to, against these people. I don't know. There's elves. There's people with magic powers. There's... But, like, I don't know what the long haul is. I don't know. Oh, Melanchians. Melanchians? Melanchian? That's what I would say. It's Melanchian? almost like... Martian? It's so Ashanta Melanchian. Melanchian? I don't know. Elven? <coughs> so Elven is like people who are elves and they speak elf. Elf? I don't know. Um, I don't know why these people, why he's going to war with them, why this orb is so... Sought after? Yeah, like everyone loves it and everything. Nobody, I just, I, it was so hard. Then I got to a part where he's captured by witches and... His dog comes to save him. Um, the dog tears out the witch's throat and crushes one of the skulls, and he goes into detail about it. And I read one more chapter after that, and I'm like, you know what? It's not worth my time. I can't get half of the story. I'm not enjoying it because I don't know half of the story. And then so. we had found, I'll, if I remember, I'll link it link down below. We actually found somebody that was saying the exact same thing. Yeah, so she was telling me this, so I go, <coughs> excuse me. I go on Goodreads and I start reading reviews and I'm like, well, surely somebody is going to address some of these things. And yeah, somebody actually went in and was like, what the heck is going on here? Yeah. I have, and she just, she was laying out point by point. I'm like, Emma's told me that. Emma's told me that. So I just showed her the review and she's like, exactly. Yeah. I was so. like, exactly. Like, I agree with this person. It, I, I couldn't finish it. Oh my word, this is like the month of DNFs. <laughs> um, the Joy of X. My mom bought this thinking it would help with math, but it was making math seem so much more difficult and complicated, complicated and um, he, w he just, it was almost like he was doing common core math. Making this simple um, concept. concept and going, like, having this whole entire chapter of what you can do, and I'm like, do just do this and this, and boom, you're there. You don't have to go into detail about it. But it was it was so hard to get through just one chapter. I highlighted a couple of good things. So like math always involves both invention and discovery. We invent like the concepts, but discover their consequences. I like that. Like anything else, our arithmetic has its serious side and its playful side. It was making my head hurt just like reading it. <laughs> like. But I'm I done, Mom. I'm done. done. I don't want to make math seem so much more difficult because I'm already in algebra and it's... I don't have a book to... What, it was a book that I have read for a review for Celebrate Lit. So I will leave down below the blog post that I wrote for that. And this is Blood Sisters by Jim O'Shea. 
I started reading it and basically was like, I had low expectations for this book. I even had snapped a section of this and sent it to my mom and said, based on this, how old would you assume these girls are? And she gave a number that I was pretty sure that I would have said, you know, 16, 17. Yeah, these are 20 year old women. I was like, no, they they sound like teeny boppers, <laughs> not young, young adults. Um, just, it, it was hard, but the more the book got into, the more I was actually drawn into the story, which that gave it a higher rating to for me. I, it went from like a two to a four star. Um, I just don't think this guy understands women <laughs> very well. And this is a story basically of her twin sister was killed um, in a tragic accident on board a ship. So she had something to do with the military. Are you eating popcorn in our video? Yes, I am. You hungry? Mm -hmm. Teenagers. Um, and basically now there is a mystery here. Why is her, her sister is dead, but everybody is saying that she, our main character, is being seen doing wrong things. So, what is going on here? Is her twin really dead? It's almost like a three by Ted Decker. That's where my mind went. Like, is this one of those situations where she doesn't really know what she's doing and she has another personality? What What is what is going on here? I was so enraptured. I was trying to figure everything out. Uh, everybody she loves is, is dying. Like, what is going on here? So... Again, I, it brought up to four because I I did not predict the ending. Nope. Kind of wondered, but no. Ending was a full, full uh, surprise for me. So that was really interesting, um, especially because it, it is a Christian. It's a Christian mystery. There's another word for it, and I can't think of the word. But anyway. Thriller? Yeah, it's, it's a thriller. So that was, that one was really surprisingly good. Then um, I'm going to get to the one book that I read. Remember we, we had five books that we were trying to read this summer. I thought I was going to get two done this month. No. But I did get one and that is the Mother Daughter Book Club by he Heather Vogel Frederick. Really thought this was going to have like a high rating. No. What I assumed this book was going to be was kind of a two- point of view we would go back forth from the mother to the daughter no we have four points of view all having to do with middle grade hormonal girls and I do not like books like that and it's all centered around this particular book our first book is centered around little women and um what personalities these girls have and how they fit with the characters of little women but Half, there's like three girls here that are considered uh, not in the in group and then one girl here is considered the in, you know, like the popular, Miss Popular. So three girls against the one. The two moms are more of a hip mom, more of a uh, money mom and a model mom. And so the model mom has a girl that's anti-everything she's hockey she's everything and so even though they it would have matched for the hockey girl to go with the popular girl didn't work anyway oh, it ended up being three stars because I don't know even even now I'm thinking did I really give this three stars it's kind of surprising to me oh wait we have I have never let go and wait Never let go. We didn't we just do that when I said it was my DNF and you talked about it? Mm, kind of. Um, so I kind of talked about it. There was our main character Willow and then our like other main character Austin. They had a past that Willow wants nothing to do with Austin anymore. But they end up every time they go into the room they can't stop thinking about each other and wanting to touch each other. There's a reason I DNF. No, book. it's not all that. Um, 
Because even Willow doesn't like it when he comes here. I know, because I really want him, but I refuse to have anything to do with him. But I really want him to. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Thank but, you. Um, and so they grow closer together while they're both working on um, to do, or Austin's helping Willow, and together they find out who has kidnapped this girl. But on top of that, there was two people that were murdered while they were on this case, and. Willow was almost murdered and Austin was almost murdered and they're wondering why they were murdered. Why is this person after them when all they're doing is trying to find this one girl. So while they're doing that, their relationship grows, grows closer together and blah 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 blah. You get the point. Shocker. And then when I finished with The Dreamer, <clears throat> I was pretty surprised. Oh, Never Let Go was a three star for me. Um, but Dreamer was, I was pretty surprised. At it, Pam, it was by Pam Who Knows Ryan, and she did Esperanza Rising, which I loved. But this book was really depressing. <laughs> um, really depressing. And this boy named Naftali has no friends at school, he's really skinny. His father <laughs> is like, I don't want you to read anything as long as it's gonna be for medical school or law school. So, Naftali still does it, kind of behind his father's back, but the Father is like the strict, really strict dad. A mentally, he like a mentally abuses Naphtali, if that makes sense. Verbally? Yeah. Um, Naphtali wants to escape from his, from the house for a while. And he finds this librarian and the librarian gives him books. And so there is a cottage near here. If you follow this one path, there is a cottage and you can like escape there. So he does, and he meets these swans, and they're his only friends. He also likes to write. He's so good at writing, and one of his writings, or I guess it's like a poem, um, it got published into this newspaper, and he got a scholarship. And so after he got that scholarship, he became more noticed by people, and he was like, that's the only thing I've ever wanted, is to be noticed by people, not to be abused by people, not to be laughed at by people, that kind of thing. I only gave it two stars. It was okay. It wouldn't be a book I would ever pick up again. I don't think I would recommend it to anyone. It was really, really depressing. <laughs> that. I had a few audiobooks this month. I had a few. Uh, a few. Um, one was Sarah Clarkson, Book Girl, and I think I gave it three stars. It is similar to um, like Honey for a Child's Heart, Honey for a Woman's Heart. It's similar like that where, but what makes it unique from other book list books is that Sarah Clarkson uses her journey, her life as, okay, this is what happened in this life. These are books that meant a lot to me during this life. So if you like Sally Clarkson, Sarah Clarkson, the Clarkson family, um, I think this one a lot of people gave high reviews for it. Um, a lot of the books, again, I I knew most of them. There, I think there was a couple that I, I Wendell Berry, I think is one that um, she talks a lot about. I haven't heard anything about him. Elizabeth Good. Gooch is another one Gouge. that, Gouge, whatever it is, that a lot of people talk about that I haven't read. I, those are the two that mainly that stuck out to me as I don't think I've heard of this one. There's there's some of that, so I did listen to that audiobook and um, <clears throat> just I didn't learn anything new from it. Two other audiobooks that I listened to because years ago, my, first of all, my sister said, you need to read these, you'll love them, and I didn't listen to her. Then a friend of mine, um, who I would say is like my Titus II mentor, loves Amelia Peabody, said I should read them. Didn't listen to her. And recently, I think it was Lizzie Faye Loves Books was talking about how they're reading these in her book club and um, how much she's enjoying them. And I was like, you know, I have them on my shelf. I should just pick them up and read them. And then 
Um, instead of picking up and reading it, I actually found them on either Libby or Hoop. It was Hoopla. Lib was it Hoopla? Are yeah. you sure? I think it was Libby. I'm pr I'm pretty sure it was Libby. I can look at the phone. Maybe. I'm pretty sure it was Libby. And the reason I want to be accurate in what I, where I'm telling you is so if you want to go look it up yourself, you can find it. And the gal that read them was superb. I thought she did a really good job. I think it was... Ugh. I, I'll put here. And I was telling my mom and she's like, no, 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 no. You have to hear such and such do it. I'll put that person here. So I listened to my mom's recommendation of it and, and yeah I think both narrators do a phenomenal job personally but the other the one that my mom recommends that's on audible or she got from audible they do a really good job anyway let's get to the point Amelia Peabody is hilarious she is bones in Victorian times she is a no-nonsense gal. I like her better than Bones, actually. But no-nonsense, um, wants to be an archaeologist, ends up in these fun mysteries, usually dealing, so far, I think, all with Egyptology, um, Egyptian, things like that. And um, we have Amelia Peabody, and in the first one, she has one girl that she has kind of taken under her wing that will be an assistant to her. And then they run into these brothers who are Diggs and the Emerson brothers. One is Radcliffe and the other is Walter. And they're funny. They're just, it's a, it's a ride. And it's, um, the first one you have Crocodile on the sand bank. You have who is basically pretending to be a mummy and haunting these people and all of that and then I think even still um, the curse of the pharaohs you still have um, them coming up and figuring out anyway all that to say it's not so much the mystery that's the best part about the books it really is the character Amelia Peabody and just um, she's hilarious I don't I don't know how <laughs> I don't know what other adjective I can give her I had so much fun reading these a laugh I, I, I laughed so so much definitely enjoyed them Whew, we need to wrap up this book yeah. so I also had a buddy read that I'm Rebecca from Hicks Picks Books and I read the other Einstein together and I loved reading this with Becca um, we were going back and forth on different points and um, yeah just oh I Ah, so Maleva is, you're going to kind of get her story and then that's the main focus of the other Einstein. It's not so much Einstein with Mitzvah, I always get it wrong, Maleva at his side. It is her with Einstein at her, at her side. And this story basically says, or this, this, um, Marie Benedict is basically taking the idea that the author of the theory of relativity was actually more the work of Mrs. Einstein than it was Albert. And he just is a twit and took all the credit for himself. And um, this does not paint a very flattering picture of Einstein. And so when I finished the book, and I think I gave this book four or five stars. Four or five stars. No, I don't think I gave it five stars. I think it was like a four star read. Um, it was really fascinating to know all the things that she had to go through and the insecurities that she had to overcome and how in her mind she um, went far and be of um, the expectations that people had for her. But it was kind of irritating at times because she would conform to what people assume she needed to be but then she would step out of that conformity and go do what she knows she does well but then step back and so anyway it was it was kind of frustrating at times just her character but I thought Marie Benedict did really well especially when you went back and you looked at the author's note and how she kind of put all of this together and um, some of the other stuff that I looked into about this I thought it was really um, 
really well written, well well put. So I I enjoyed that. I thought it, again I will probably. Um, uh, Becca found some of the um, the science stuff a little heavy, and I understand where she's coming from. But I honestly found the science in here easier to get through than the next book that I read, which was Albert Einstein and the Theory of Relativity by Robert, and I am not going to be able to say that name. But this one is actually assigned in Ambleside Online, which I know some of you that watch it um, know what I'm talking about here. It's a homeschool program. And she was assigned to this book two years ago, I think, um, assigned for science. And I had never read it, so after finishing The Other Einstein, I picked this up to kind of, okay, what do other people say that Einstein was like? It was interesting to me how similarly they corresponded with information. Um, so Albert Einstein in here kind of starts off as, yeah, a little scatterbrained, a little hoity-toity, but a still likable kind of guy. And then the more he progressed in his um, life, just the more of a short-tempered kind of character. And this seem to back that up really well. One of the things that I thought was interesting in here is it opens up with him um, seeing electricity for the first time and I did not understand all of the stuff that electricity brought about. Uh, for example, this one like pe there were people were selling and buying all sorts of elect electric oddities. There were electric garters to improve posture, electric cigarettes that could be lit without matches electric combs to control stubborn hair, and even electric necktie lights to give a fashionable glow to a suit of clothes. And that's just stuff that I'm like, I don't remember us learning about that when electricity was first coming out in the 1900s. So there was definitely some things in here that were interesting, but it was a very heavy book, especially when our author got into the science stuff. Talk about your eyes glazing over and not understanding a word that's going on. So at one point he will go into how the the theory works and I didn't register a word but did, I had no idea what, still what the whole relative to be a theory is other than I have a little bit more with this and how light travels, I think. I'm not sure. Ugh. So, but I found this one very heavy I would almost, if it's about Albert Einstein that we want to learn about, a lot of what he said is backed up in here, except for the, the kind of character his mom is. So I think these worked well together. But yeah, other than um, this one brings out that she was uh, Marie, not Marie Curry, Mit, Maliva, Maliva, Mitza? Is interested w with Marie Curie. This is more explained in here. This one barely mentions her even being in the picture at the time. So I know this might be a little confusing but because of that it also brought me into reading these two books which is about Marie Curie which fits in with all of these. And to be honest I found this one a lot more interesting than I did this one and it is a lot smaller. It's by the same series of biographies, but it's a lot smaller. And this one is about Marie Curie. And holy moly, Marie Curie was a fascinating woman. She balanced the her work, her dedication to her work. She was fully dedicated to it and all into it. But at the end of the day, she was still a mom. And at the beginning of the day, like, she still needed to find a way to provide for her family, and so she did. But she is a fascinating woman. Um, wow. <laughs> it was, she was very remarkable. And I really liked just the, the, the kind of woman she was. She knew what she wanted to do, and she went for it. She lived simply so that she could devote her time to this. It was, it was a very, very very moving story and 
because I had this one, I also wanted to compare it to the Who Was Marie Curie, which we only we already had. And um, I would say this is like a second grade, maybe third grade type book, and this one would be better for fourth, fifth, sixth um, type of book. And then you could do this is more of an Einstein, but anyway. <coughs> I would say that these covered pretty much very similarities. This one is a very simplified version of this. And with this one, um, it kind of gave more of a, a, a smoother way of writing about Marie Curie. That didn't come out right, but um, the only big difference that I found between the two is that this one implies that the scandal of Marie Curie <clears throat> with her possibly um, having an affair with a guy, like they make it where they don't say, oh, she did. They basically point to that conclusion. Whereas this one says there was a scandal in the papers about this, but here's why that may not even be possible. She wasn't even in the area at the time. So two different conclusions um, for that. But because of this book, I dug into these books. And these, like, these two were read in a day. This one took a little bit longer because of the science behind the it. The science behind it. But oh my lanta, I think this one did a much better job with the science than this one. I felt like I could understand that a little bit more. Yeah, uh, that one is As You Wish. This is the second book of the Christine Todd college years. Um, now that she she's back at in California at her Christian college called Ran Rancho Corona. Okay, yeah, Rancho Corona. Yeah, University. see, I said it's like Rancho Cucamonga. Rancho Corona, Rancho Corona University, and during this. Todd and Christy, their relationship grows, and he's offered a position to teach high schoolers at a, or, um, a youth director, so he's like 23. So with this, their relationship grows, she meets her lifetime, um, she, uh, this boy named Matthew Kingsley who she grew up with when she lived in Wisconsin at her farm. Um, she might still have feelings for him, but she realizes that Todd is still her, you know, her true love. And then, you know, Todd's said, I love you, but Chrissy's never said, I loved you to Todd. So one day when he gets into a fatal accident that almost kills him, she decides to say, I love you. And yeah but it's like so sweet she like stays with him up all night and he's just it, it's so sweet i i like this book i fl i got it was kind of hard to get to, to like the first half of it and then it took me like an hour to refinish the other half it was just so good but with uh robin jones gun like the first part or first half of um she got to get her yeah. groove going yeah um so I like this one, I get 4.5. The reason why I didn't give it a full five star was because, you know, the um, one issue, you know, and the other ones where she doesn't get her own way, she's kind of whiny about it. Not as bad as the beginning of this series, but she still kind of is like that and only wanting Todd and Todd. Yeah, that book a lot. <laughs> You guys, we read so much. It's This is gonna be a long video. If you guys made it to the end of this video, round of applause for you. Um, go make yourself another cup of coffee. Or tea. And I read another, another chapter. chapter.